every service that runs in SharePoint runs under some service identity or service account. And there's a lot of debate around how many service accounts do I need? What am I going to use them for? So I present this as one model. I think this is a really good approach. However, you might think that you need more service accounts or less. And I won't say that you're wrong in what you assess. I think a lot of this comes down to local security policies and how you're going to use the farm. But I'll just put this forward as one model. I think it's a really good starter model. It's easy to work with. It keeps the security configurations to a reasonable level and uh, provides a, a good level of protection for information both within the SharePoint form and outside. But again, you can choose a different model. So just to talk through what these accounts are, the first is the farm account. So this is the core account that really runs the SharePoint farm underneath. And it tends to get a lot of permissions. So uh, it needs that in order that it controls services on all the servers and deploy software and do a lot of things that the farm itself needs to do. The second is the web account. So in this case, it's uh, you see each of these is prefixed with SVC like service and then SP is SharePoint and, and web is all the web front ends. So this is really the service account that's running the IAS, and IAS application pools that users are actually interacting with. So we want to limit the amount of permission that this account has and so that's why we've really separated that. The search account runs the crawl and search services. In some farms you may actually separate this into two or more accounts. In this case everything that deals with search I'm just going to use one account for that. The BI account is really running all these BI related services. So reporting services, Excel services and so on. All of those I'll run with the same BI account. They're essentially all these services are accessing the same information. So one account to me makes a lot of sense. However, in your environment, you might find you need more accounts uh, than just the one. And that's that's up to you. But I will say that the, the more accounts you add in this BI layer, the more configuration you'll have to do. So you have to balance the configuration workload versus the security that you would potentially get by adding additional accounts. And then I've set up a separate unattended service account for those BI services that have the concept of unattended operations. Uh, the reason for this is because I don't necessarily want to use my BI account. It may have too much permission for an unattended user query. So I've separated that out and labeled it very clearly so I know exactly what that is. In your environment, you may not even want to use this, but I am going to use it or at least configure it. And uh, that's the account I'll use. Claims to Windows, we'll talk about a little bit later, and Claims to Windows is used for uh, Kerberos delegation as kind of a proxy, and uh, it, the best practice is for it to have its own account because it will get uh, quite a lot of permissions on the servers where it runs. So we don't want to use that account that has so many permissions that also has access to our data, so we separate a little bit that way. And then the last account is the database account that runs the SQL databases, not within the SharePoint environment, but the databases that service the users and the content within the farm.